scrounge around, you know, for a weapon here and there. Imagine if they had this contact. In this instance, uh, no weapons that. traveled anywhere. And, uh, when Detective uh, Rodriguez handed over $56,000 in exchange for Turple's contract promising delivery of the guns, the deal was suddenly interrupted. The conspiracy was proved in court, and that count alone contributed seven years to Turple's sentence. Which was probably true. In the end, the court cases against Frank Turple raise more questions than they answer. Where does intelligence stop and crime actually begin? Why did Turple and Wilson operate for years before the authorities moved? Why was Turple released on bail twice? And how did he slip out of the country? We were informed through an official source, uh, both uh, Gary and myself, that in the event that we were being incarcerated again, in the likely event that we would, <clears throat> that we would probably not survive the first month. In fact, it was fairly well arranged that we would not survive the first month. I'm oh, sorry, can I get that absolutely clear? Somebody in an official position. Somebody in an official position had gotten to, to Gary, Gary Korkla, and informed him that due to information that might possibly reveal about a political figure, that we would not survive one month. So you were told by people in authority to get out of the country? Yes. <clears throat> we were also told that there would be no official uh, agency would stop us. In other words, there would be a blind eye turn because I left the country right from Washington, D.C. You left from Washington, D.C.? Yes. And without any problems? No problems at all. Can you discuss the way you got out of the country? No. Finally, there was a question that had bothered us since our first day in Beirut. We shared it with a contact to military intelligence who'd known Frank Turple. Why do you think he invited us to make this film? I would say that uh, with this film, He's either reinforcing his act or he's trying to say he's had enough and he needs out. So we might be being used as well? Absolutely. By I mean, I don't think that you can travel around the world like you have uh, to make this film and not feel a little bit concerned about whether or not you're being used, as all of us do. You know, and where and how are we being used? See, we've had no impediments put in our way. Nobody's asked to see our material. We've been allowed to go in and out of countries. We've been allowed to meet Frank, who maintains a very high profile where he is. And nobody stopped us, and nobody's made anything difficult for us. Tend to make you nervous. We came to Beirut to confront the man who had put steel into the spine of Idi Amin, supplier to Gaddafi, Somoza, and the Shah of Iran. Turple had been all these things. But whose interests were really served by his presence in Uganda and Libya? After following Turple's trail for seven months, we were more and more convinced that this unique and dangerous man was but a medium-sized cog in the machinery of international intrigue and covert diplomacy. An indiscreet NCO dismissed from the ranks by master tacticians whose games are too complex, too frightening to comprehend. In our last hours in Beirut, a global drama shrank to human proportions. Ruth, you didn't even know Frank when he was dealing with Amin and the others. What do you feel when he talks about these things? I don't know. The way I look at him, I just love him for being him. And I don't care about the past. And I'm just looking for the future. I trust him, and he's very compassionate, very loving, and very caring. And it's hard to explain. Try and explain. I don't want him to be out of my sight. And some of the uh, things that some people I've met, the 
they've told me about him, that he's a killer. I just don't believe it. You said earlier that you were scared whenever he was out of your sight. That's true. Scared of what? I don't know. If he's by my side, I feel all right. I know that he's with me. But once he walks out of that door, We left Frank Turple in Beirut, still hawking his lethal know-how to his diminishing clientele. Shortly afterwards, two intermediaries approached the White House and the Senate with an offer from Turple to trade highly sensitive information on State Department, White House and CIA officials for a reduction in sentence. A representative of Congress agreed to meet Turple in the Middle East. While arrangements were underway, Turple was visited by three members of Syrian intelligence. He left Ruth Boyd at 10 a.m. on Saturday, November the 7th, 1981. He has not been seen or heard of since. There have been new developments even as we prepare to go on the air. Turple's associate, Gary Corkola, who disappeared with him in November, turned up in Beirut and told us on the phone that he and Turple, who is still away, are alive and well. Corkola would not explain their disappearance, but last month a message was sent to Turple's friend Ruth Boyd to reassure her. It originated in Germany and said that Turple had met Edwin Wilson's men from Libya, and the group departed from Europe according to a predetermined plan. We have no idea what the nature of our plan is of Wilson and these men from Gaddafi's Libya. The business of terrorism raises some disturbing questions. How could Turple and Wilson operate against the national interest for so long with such immunity? Their former accomplices say the CIA knew what was going on. Douglas Schlachter, who has just pleaded guilty in a conspiracy to smuggle explosives, he told federal authorities that as late as 1978, he was reporting on activities in Libya to the CIA and receiving intelligence assignments. Were Wilson and Turple just manipulating the old boy network, recruiting some of the old boys for their business? Or did somebody in the CIA find use for their business and cloak them with some authority? The CIA says it can find nothing in its files to support that contention. The Justice Department at last is conducting an exhaustive investigation. The House Intelligence Committee has been trying to find out what went on. Investigations will become harder as the government tightens the cloak of secrecy around intelligence agencies. One pending law banning identification of intelligence agents could make it a crime to expose a future Frank Turple. The government is closing the information door instead of that revolving door between our covert agencies and international terror. Good night, and as an old mentor of mine used to say, Good luck. Stay with us now for All Things Considered on Main Street. That's next here on Channel 9. For a transcript of this program, please send $3 to World, Box 1000, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118.